Blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle. And Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. Stop and think about that for a moment. Buddha will bow his knee and confess in all honor and adoration that Jesus Christ is King, the only one worthy of such praise. So will Muhammad and Krishna, and Bell, and Lucifer himself will bow the knee and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is King of creation, King of glory, high and lifted up, and there is no other above him. Hallelujah, friends. Isn't it wonderful to be on the winning side? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're going to continue our brief survey through the book of First John, and we pick up today in verse 9 of chapter 2. And we've been talking about the difference between the darkness and the light. Now the darkness simply represents sin. It, it represents that dark abode that resides within men that causes men to do what pleases himself, to seek his own, and really to give no attention, affection, or service of any kind to any other human being, unless there's something that we gain from it. It's that dog-eat-dog -dog world mentality. And look at what the Bible has to say about it. He that says he is in the light, that he is in Christ Jesus, because remember, Jesus is the light of the world. So he that saith he is in Jesus, and yet hates his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loves his brother abides in Jesus, or the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hates his brother is in darkness, and he walks in darkness, and he does not know whither he goes, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. There's a lot of significance placed on how we treat others. Now, it does say the word brother here, and if you look that up, that's talking about a kinship. And certainly it's a kinship that we enjoy amongst the fellowship because we are brothers with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so anyone who is a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ is our brother and sister in Christ. So this is definitely speaking to those that are within the fellowship. But even more than that, we know that Yahweh has told us we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, fellow mankind as ourselves. And it doesn't matter what race doesn't matter what gender, doesn't matter who it is or where they are, we are to love them. And love is best seen when it costs us something. So we are supposed to be sacrificing ourselves for the benefit of others. That's what we've been called to do. Now, I cannot read a passage like this without thinking about slavery. And so I want to spend a moment and just kind of focus on that. Because when we talk about slaves, people will say, well, well they had slaves all the way back to the Old Testament. I mean, even some of the greatest men of God owned slaves. And the Bible speaks very clearly about slavery in the first five books of the Bible. Yes, but understand that slavery then and slavery as we define it now is absolutely different. To give you an example, you had the Jubilee year, which is once every seven years. And on that seventh year, anyone who was a slave was set free. Now, if they decided to stay, they could stay. And there was a process, a, a, a ritual that they would go through where they would now become the ownership of their master. And there was no way out ever again. They could never leave. They were bound to the master and the master was bound to them. But stop and ask yourself the question. Why would they choose to stay if they're being mistreated? They wouldn't. The only reason they've chosen to stay is because they are like a servant. The master loves them and cares for them. He takes care of them in good and bad and sickness and in health. And not only does he take care of them and provide food in their stomachs and roof over their heads, he takes care of their family that they begin to take on the longer that they're with the master. And so it would be like a maid in a mansion or a butler in a mansion in today's mentality. But that's not what this passage is talking about. This passage is talking about those of us that mistreat, 
treat cruelly those around us, that we do not love them, that we do not reach out to them, that, that we do not seek to meet their need. You see, slavery as it took place here in America and even over in England and Britain in that area was a vile ordeal. The way that they were treated from Africa on those ships until they arrived at their destination, most of them died due to disease and hunger and cold and hardship that you and I can't even begin to imagine. But when they did arrive here, they were abused, they were mistreated, they were assaulted, they were sexually assaulted. And the tragedy is by many who would call themselves Christians in title alone. But based upon the very way that they treated these people, there was nothing Christian about them. Because look at what our text says. He that hates his brother, that treats his brother with anything other than love, is in darkness and walks in darkness. Look, when the Bible says love your neighbor as yourself, how can you do that with any conscience and mistreat others like that. Even outside of slavery, picking on someone weaker than yourself, what we would call a bully, mocking and making fun of people who don't meet your standard, maybe the mentally handicapped, maybe the physically handicapped, all done in the name of joking and good humor. There's nothing funny about it, friends. It's evil. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, Verse 2, walk in love as Christ has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and uncleanness and covetousness, let it not be named once among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, this is obscenity, obscene jokes, nor foolish talking, nor jesting. Friends, do you get the idea? Don't let this be named among you once just for the sake of a laugh. Not only should you flee such things, you should abhor such things. We are to walk in love as Christ walked in love. And look at the end of verse 11 in our text. It says, darkness has blinded his eyes. He can't see the truth. He has become callous to the things of God. So that when the Spirit tries to speak gently, and it would only be that gentle voice that would penetrate such a tender heart, the Spirit is unable to be heard because the callousness on the heart of that man or woman is so thick that the Spirit himself cannot penetrate it. That's why as much as I would like not to pick on certain things that take place in this life and leave you to figure it out for yourself, sometimes it's hard to do because maybe you have become so callous to the things of God that you can literally sit in front of a rated R movie and have no conscience about it whatsoever. If that is true, that should strike fear in your heart. Because you can't tell me you honestly believe that the Lord of glory, the King of the heavens, would sit in the presence of such filth and cursing and killing and lies and murder and rape and on and on the list goes. Some of the music that you listen to, you honestly think that Jesus himself would listen to that filth? You think Jesus would be entertained by boot scooting boogie? Moonwalking down Electric Avenue? And these are the songs that they play on the radio. Not to mention those that aren't worthy of the radio, that cannot be played across the airwaves. We wonder why the world is in the shape it's in. Look at the things that it's given itself to. Friends, check yourself today. If there is a prejudice bone in your body, if you cannot sit down with the, with the most defiled beggar, the most unloving, unkind, uncaring person, then the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't reside in your heart. Because the darkness is hatred. 
And the Bible tells us that God is love. And love drives out all hatred. The Pentecostals want to say the initial sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. No, it's not, friends. It's love. An overwhelming love for everything on planet Earth. I don't care if it's a tree. I don't care if it's a bug, an animal, or another human being. There is no hatred in your heart for anyone or anything because the love of God permeates your heart. That's why you find yourself breaking in the most awkward moments. Weeping at a simple commercial because your heart is so tender that the love of God in your soul responds to every opportunity it finds itself afforded. Well, I love you, friends. We're going to leave it off for here today. I pray that you do experience the love of the Messiah and that you walk with Jesus today just like the disciples walked with him some 2,000 years ago. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, I will see you on the next...